Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is November 18th, 2024. And this is going to be the Fall of Babylon, Part 3 of the Resurrection Series. As of today, I'm still on YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. So, all right, let's turn our King James Bibles, which I trust, to Revelation chapter 18. I'm going to try to make this the uh, last of the Fall of Babylon. We'll see what happens. All right, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. After, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was, earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily, with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Said that twice. We're going to go take a look at that. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, in the previous study, we showed from the Bible alone that Babylon, spiritually, is end-time Jerusalem, which is the becomes the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. Now, why does it say Babylon... The great is fallen, is fallen. Hmm. Well, it fell once physically, and it will fall again spiritually. Now, in a previous study, we took a look at Revelation 14, 8, and we read, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So that is one. Is there something in the Old Testament? Hmm. Well, actually, yes. In Isaiah chapter 21, we read, now if you want to read the whole chapter, you can, but I'm only going to read verse 9. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men, chariot, with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods, plural. Babylon has fallen, has fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. Hmm. So they had graven images of their gods, false gods. So, Revelation 18. Let's go back and let's see. So Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen, has, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich 
through the abundance of her delicacies. Verse 4. Very important. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Not the whole world. God's people. Come out of her, my people. God wants his people to come out of Babylon. I mean, really. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. God is going to plague Babylon for her sins. For her sins, Babylon's, have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Now remember, Jerusalem was to be the capital of Israel, which was to be the bride of Christ. That's why she says, I sit a queen and am no widow. Because she believes her king is not dead. And says, and shall see no sorrow. Mm. But it is in time Babylon going to See no sorrow? Well, verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Whoa, that don't sound good, does it? Fall of Babylon, people. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and delived, and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Uh, there's, you know, <laughs> the Bible says the earth is going to be burned up. There's a number of places that is. Let's take a look at some fire. I did an entire playlist on fire. Uh, in Hebrews 12, 29, For our God is a consuming fire. Now, everybody that I've ever known attributes the book of Hebrews to Paul. But if you think Paul's a false apostle, then yeah, you could ignore it. All right, let's uh, take some other things. First Corinthians 3.15 If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And that only applies to those that are in Christ. Matthew 13.40 as therefore the tares, or the weeds, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Huh. Boy, that doesn't sound good, huh? Now, if you don't like Paul, don't read this. 
2 Thessalonians 1 and 8. In flaming fire, flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you mean obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? What in the world is that? Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. He also said, why say ye to me, Lord, Lord, and do not those things which I tell you? Well, that's a paraphrase, but you get the idea. There's people who tell you, all you got to do is believe in Jesus. Well, if that was true, Satan's saved because he absolutely believes in Jesus. I don't think so. And by the way, Luke 6.46, Jesus speaking. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Good question, huh? All right, let's take a look at some, some more fire. All right, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. And by the way, those that hate Paul will tell you that 2 Peter is not a legitimate book in the Bible because, well, it acknowledges Paul as a brother in the faith, brother in Christ, a beloved brother. So let's read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Hmm. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, the heavens being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. No more tears in this kingdom when it comes. So, I guess you get the idea. Uh, the Lord's going to burn up wickedness. It's coming. Let's go back to Revelation 18 and verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, Babylon, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Verse 12. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fire and wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Souls of men. Babylon bought the souls of men. You ever heard of selling your soul to the devil? Well, I guess that's where they got this from. I don't know. Or got that from. All these things are used in temple worship, people. All these things are used 
in temple worship, according to the book of Leviticus. Verse 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple, color royalty, and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Now there are people that will tell you that Jerusalem cannot possibly be Babylon because the ships are watching this burning from the sea and they're saying, oh, well, Jerusalem is 35 miles or 60 kilometers away from the Mediterranean Sea. Huh. Well, guess what, people? What they call the Trinity Test, the world's first atomic bomb, which was de de uh, detonated in the desert of New Mexico in 1945, there are those that will tell you that the cloud, the mushroom cloud, that was seen was visible from over 100 miles away. So, what can I tell you? Now, there were two atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan. Everybody knows about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, there are accounts that the they were visible for at least 50 miles away. And supposedly, the bombings shattered windows over 100 miles away. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? And that's just the A-bomb. I think the Lord is a lot more powerful than the atomic bomb, but eh, what do I know? I'm just some dummy that uh, read the Bible a couple times, huh? All right, so... Uh, verse 17. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. So the world is crying. But in verse 20, we read, Rejoice over her, thou heaven! Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Who killed the apostles and the prophets? Uh, well, when you can answer that question, you'll know who Mystery Babylon is. And I did cover that in the last lesson, part two. Verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be 
heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Who is the bridegroom? Christ, who is Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is the Christ, the Messiah. See, Babylon doesn't want to hear the voice of Christ. Do you know that the oldest Christian church in the world was bombed and destroyed recently, this year, over in the Middle East? Yeah. It was. And why is the bride not heard? Because the church is being destroyed in Babylon. Do you know in the 90s, early 90s, there was an average of three churches a week being bulldozed over there? And it wasn't the Arabs doing it. Take a guess who was doing it. Those that do not believe that Christ is the Messiah. That's who. So the voice of the bridegroom and the bride will not be heard over there. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Wow. You want to know what these sorceries were? Well, we're going to I'm going to put up some uh images that you can look at it. Verse 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets. Jesus tells you where the prophets were slain, and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. The tares, people. The tares. The enemy that sowed them was the devil. Those are the words of Christ, not my words. I'm just reporting what's being said by Christ. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 19. And... Let's see. Hold on a second here. Okay. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they say, they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. That's a long time, people. Forever and ever. Verse 4. And the four and twenty elders, of which I think are the twelve apostles, including Paul and the 12 patriarchs of the tribes of Israel. That's who I think they are. And the four and 20 elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Omnipotent, omnipotent. That means all-powerful. Verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, 
For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Let me tell you something, people. The bride, the church, the remnant of truly spirit-filled, blood-bought believers is not ready. She is not ready. But she will be. She will be made ready in the trials of affliction and persecution. Persecution will separate the goats from the sheep. There will be a revival. It may not be a big one, but it will be powerful because the, the Western church in America, for example, has never seen persecution. Never. Never have we seen open hostility. Well, we've seen words. But I'm talking about people murdered for their faith in Christ. We have never seen that happen. The laws are on the books. The Noahide laws. They're on the books. Every Christian could be put to death following those laws. Method of execution. Beheading. And we've read that somewhere, isn't it, in the Bible? Death by beheading. Absolutely. But you can't get the wolves behind the pulpits pretending to be pastors to talk about it. Oh no, you're going to fly away. You won't see persecution. It's not going to happen. You won't have to die for your faith. That's for the other guy. Well... God might have other plans. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed, clothed, in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Not our righteousness. His righteousness. Christ. And he saith unto me, write. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, an angel. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. People, the words of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It will come to pass. It will happen one day. Maybe in our lifetime, maybe not. I don't know. I don't claim to be a prophet. I believe my spiritual gift is that of a teacher. I'm not a, I'm not a pastor. I'm a teacher. Verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Do you know who this is? Oh, yeah. Emmanuel, God with us. Christ Jesus, the Word of God. 
And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. And guess what? Those stupid Jehovah's Witnesses have a male figure with a sword coming out of his mouth. That is their stupidity. That's why you don't read that garbage. The Bible tells you what the sword is. You want to know what the two-edged sword that comes out of his mouth is? Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Huh, Jesus is called the Word of God, isn't he? Yes, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You see, your soul and spirit are not the same. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And that's why stupid people that read Jehovah's Witnesses literature will see a sword coming out of a male figure's mouth. I mean, really? Ugh. Just like the beast rising up out of the sea, they'll show a dragon with all these different heads coming out of the water. It's figures of speech, people. Come on. Revelation 19.15 and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. They're going to be judged by the word of God. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Oh yeah, all the, all the vultures are going to have a feast. 18. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. You know why the United States government created the Space Force? My opinion, they're going to try to fight Christ when he and his army of angels and cloud of saints come to earth to destroy the wickedness on this earth. That is my guess. They're not worried about UFOs and space aliens and reptilians or greys or whatever you want to call them. No. They want to fight against Christ. Because one day the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to come to take back his kingdom, what is rightfully his. And I think uh, Satan's lease on this world is getting ready to run out. Verse 19, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, 
and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. So the beast and the false prophet, think, think about those. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with fire and brimstone. Whoa. Verse 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 20. This is a very important chapter. Verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent. Now this is a figure of speech, people. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. I've actually had people try to tell me that the devil and Satan are two different beings. Uh, well, no, because you got the word and. I've been called Robert and I've been called Bob. So you can call me either one. Oh boy, when my, when my sister and family uh, called me Robert, I knew I was in trouble. And when I was a young teen, I was always in trouble. That was my middle name. I was a stubborn, rebellious kid. I'm surprised that God didn't kill me back then. What do they say? I'm only old and stupid now because when I was young and stupid, God was looking out after me. And he, the angel, laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Why is the Lord going to bound this, the devil, for a thousand years? Well, I've done a Bible study on it. But the short version is, I believe that all the children that died before the age of accountability or maturity, for a young man that was 20 years old, what about all the babies aborted in the womb or children that died in childbirth? Aren't they going to be given a chance to grow up? I believe so. How about a thousand years without Satan? That's what I think the purpose of the millennial kingdom is. But this is only the introduction to the eternal kingdom, people. Now, people will argue with me and say, well, you know, in the kingdom, uh, there's no marriage or giving a marriage, but they'll be like the children in heaven. I'm sorry, uh, like the angels in heaven. In heaven. Not all the angels are in heaven. In Matthew chapter 22, in verse 30, Jesus said, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So there's not going to be any marriage in heaven. Now we're going to read Isaiah 11 real quick. Maybe the whole thing, maybe not. I'm not sure yet. Verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Isaiah 11. Who was Jesse? Jesse was father of David, who was king of Israel. You know David and Goliath? Yeah, that David. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. 
And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Now we're not talking about King David here. We're talking about Christ, who, according to the line of Joseph, was of the line of David. Verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Wow. Do you know that the breath of his lips, Christ is going to slay the wicked? Isn't this what we just read in Revelation? Yeah. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. This is the book of Isaiah, people. Now, in on YouTube, I did an entire playlist on Isaiah. If you ask me, Isaiah is a very important book and sadly neglected in the Bible. Very, very few people will encourage people to go out, read Isaiah. Isaiah is very important. Verse 6. And don't fall for this Mandela garbage. The Mandela effect. Why would you name a corruption of the Bible after a, a black communist from South Africa. Nelson Mandela is a black communist. God-hating communist. I got a picture of him before a Soviet flag. A red Soviet flag. And if you want, I got a video of him admitting they're communists. Communists hate Jesus, and I hate them. So we're even, sort of. But don't fall for this Mandela garbage. The Bible says the wolf will dwell with the lamb. It was probably Billy Goat Graham and all the rest of the TV preachers that were always saying, oh, the lion will lay down with the lamb, or a modern Bible version that you read. Or the lying TV preachers. Oh, well, I remember when the Bible said lion with the lamb. No, you don't. No, you don't. Verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf, calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. Wolves eat lambs, right? Not in the kingdom. Nope. Verse 7. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Uh, are, do lions eat straw? No, not yet. They will. So this is obviously the kingdom, people. Christ is going to dwell in righteousness and rule in righteousness. Animals are going to be vegetarians. And yet in verse 8, we're going to read about a child. Now, if there's no marriage in heaven, where are these children coming from? So let's read. Verse 8. Well, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suck, sucking child, we're talking about a child that sucks on the breast for milk. It's not weaned yet. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp. What is an asp? It's a deadly viper, a snake, very deadly, venomous. 
asp is supposedly what Cleopatra used when she uh, wanted to kill herself. She took the asp to her breast and let it bite her and died. I don't know how true that is, but that's how the story goes. So you're going to have children playing on the whole, on the whole of the asp. I mean, what kind of a mother would let a baby play near venomous snakes? Well, that's not going to be a danger in the kingdom. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Cockatrice is another dangerous serpent. Verse 9. Here's the punchline. They, the snakes, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Wow. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles, or nations, shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Huh. So I think we got enough there. So, let's go back to Revelation chapter 20. Let's start from the beginning. Verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. So all these children in the kingdom are going to grow up without Satan. And then after about a thousand years are done, Satan will be loosened from his jail so that he can go out and deceive these people that grew up in the thousand years of Christ. And believe it or not, there's going to be a lot of them that are going to follow Satan. So, verse 4. And I saw, listen to this carefully, people. This is very important. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Now, this happens during the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble, people, where people are beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Listen to this carefully. Very, very, very important. Revelation 20 and verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, this the first resurrection to me is 
after the two witnesses are resurrected, this will be the first resurrection after the two witnesses are resurrected. Uh, do you understand something here? If the pre-trib rapture was true, that means that the people that die during the tribulation who are beheaded, they would miss the marriage supper of the Lamb. They would miss it, wouldn't they? Because if everybody's up in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb, these people are getting beheaded. They miss it. And another thing, how can there be a resurrection before the first one? I mean, A is the first letter in the English language. Is there a letter before the letter A? I mean, is it Jesus' second coming and then a third coming? No, it's a second coming. There's not, you know, a one and a half coming and then a second coming, or a second coming and then a third coming. No. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The people that were beheaded for the witness of Christ don't get the resurrection until he returns and then Everybody that died, that is the first resurrection. This alone kills the pre-trib rapture. It has to. There's no other way around it. Think about it. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. There's not a resurrection before this one, people. It's the first one. Think about it. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death, spiritual death. You got physical death and then you got spiritual death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Whoa. So the resurrection has to happen at the end of the, of the, uh, at the end of the tribulation. When the last saint is killed for Christ, and God the Father tells the Lord Jesus, go get your bride. That's when it happens. Christ returns to earth once. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog. Everybody will tell you Gog and Magog is in the area of Eastern Europe, in the area of Russia. Guess where the Russian Jews are from? Your Eastern European Yiddish speakers. Take a guess where they're from. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. 
The beloved city is going to be the Lord's city. And they're wanting to fight the Lord. And fire is going to come down from heaven and burn them up. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The unholy trinity, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. They're going to be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's a long time, people. Whoa. And here comes the scary part. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, Christ, from whose face the earth and the heavens, the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. So there's a book of life, and then there's another book. I don't know what that one is. Maybe it's the book of death. I don't know. But there's at least two of them. And one of them's the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their beliefs, according to their faith. No, according to their works. Works don't save us, people. But you know what? Works are proof of what you believe. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I say? Jesus said. Whoa. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. People, do you know what happened in World War II in the war with Japan? There are going to be literally thousands of sailors that died in the war with Japan. And they're going to be given up. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whoa, the second death. You don't want to be found at the great white throne judgment. You don't want to be there, people. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Wow. Is that heavy or what? I hope you enjoyed this series. I might make this the end. I'll have to see how I feel. There's two more chapters in the book of Revelation, but... Well, let me think about it. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor, honor to Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world and his shed blood. In Jesus' precious name, amen.